What is going on everybody? Welcome to another YouTube video. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is the brand new Jetson Tegra K1 dev kit. On board is the Tegra K1 system on a chip that is new from NVIDIA. Now, I have a special treat for you guys today. I actually have one. I got it in the mail and I uh, have not even opened it yet. Still got the seal on it and everything. I thought we could open it together. Um, so, what is this chip? Um, or actually the entire board, what do we do with it, and just you know some information on it. Um, brand new chip from NVIDIA, and the main focus on this chip so far has been mobile. So the idea is that you can put one of these into a cell phone, tablet, whatever, and you can get Xbox 360, PS3 type graphics, so for gaming on phones and all of that, um, huge increase. now. One thing to keep in mind is that when gaming increases go up for performance, so does everything else on your phone. So the performance of your phone should become just drastically better. We're talking about the stats that this thing has is really the stats of your average computer, maybe not necessarily today, certainly in storage not today, but as far as performance is concerned, maybe the average computer of uh, two years ago or, or so. So probably whatever computer your family is running today um, this is just as powerful and so that's actually really impressive um, but these are just of course the claims of NVIDIA I have not really tested it and really the only tests that I've seen so far have been put out from NVIDIA one thing to just note is there's two di there's a difference here right there's the Jetson Tegra K1 dev kit which is a development kit uh, focused around the Tegra K1 chip okay and so the dev kit is a little bigger. I haven't actually seen it, but it, according to the measurements, it should be about twice the size of your, uh, your typical Raspberry Pi, okay? And uh, the next question would be, how, how powerful is it, you know, let's say, uh, in terms of the Raspberry Pi instead of PS3 or Xbox 360? The Raspberry Pi pulls uh, about 24 G-flops, whereas the Tegra K1, again, it, the claimed number is 326 G flops, so significantly more. Now, how about the price? Well, the Raspberry Pi is about forty dollars. People like to quote this like twenty to thirty dollar range for Raspberry Pi. Let me know if you see a Raspberry Pi on sale, a new one for twenty to thirty dollars. I would like to buy them. Uh, so anyway, the Raspberry Pi, more often than not, is more like thirty dollars unless you buy in bulk, or, or I mean forty dollars unless you buy in bulk or you get it with you know something together like I just found like a Raspberry Pi and the camera module I think for fifty dollars so that was actually a really good deal but anyway that aside so about forty dollars I would say for uh, your typical Raspberry Pi the Tegra K1 dev kit 192 99 I believe let me look on uh, Newegg real quick yeah 192.99 as a sort of uh, salute to the amount of cores it's got a uh, Kepler GPU with 192 CUDA enabled cores. So what does this mean? Well, um, basically, the if you look at like the Raspberry Pi, uh, especially when you consider something like Python or something like that, where when it, Python doesn't really utilize your entire GPU because it's Python by na its nature is a single threaded application. And so what you have to do if you want to get the full processing power out of your CPU with Python is you have to either do threading in a somewhat um, pseudo way um, or you can do something like PyCuda or use like Anaconda something like that that uses a CUDA um, enabled GPU to do GPU processing now that's what makes this so special is because obviously we have no problem uh, maxing out our uh, Raspberry Pi uh, really one Python script <laughs> will uh, get that thing cooking um, but with this one Python script probably would not max out this GPU and so you would start having to thread or run multiple scripts to get that processing up whereas here we can actually use CUDA and if you do it right you actually make a much more efficient program and all of that so this can get very powerful very fast um, at least according to specifications I like to test them so also, if you caught up with my last video, uh, my intentions with this are a little bit different than, you know, gaming or mobile gaming or mobile anything. 
Um, I guess mobile actually is a pretty good word, but not in the sense of cell phones and stuff. Um, I'd like to put this on a quadcopter, and I do actually have my quadcopter. I built this uh, just a few days ago, and I finished it yesterday. One of the pieces was bad, so I had to buy another one. Um, so anyway, I will probably be putting this dev kit right on top here, replace this uh, KK board with that, and I'd like to make this an autonomous quadcopter. That was my promise to NVIDIA anyway, so um, I have to at least try that. And that's really what I have more interest in. I have a computer already. Now, I am kind of curious. The Raspberry Pi is a full computer. I'm curious to find out if this Jetson Integer K1 can actually be a full computer. Uh, usable computer because the Raspberry Pi is totally usable but it takes like three seconds to open up an internet browser and then to actually browse the internet it, it it's just very slow it's very tedious now for you know forty dollars that's still very good um, so I'm curious about the Jetson Ta uh, Tager K1 a couple of things it's got two gigs of RAM 16 gigs of storage but there's SATA and SD so you can plug more stuff in there. If you didn't want to have a, a hard drive, you could use an SD card. Not recommended, at least from what I found with the Raspberry Pi. The SD card is not a good storage system. Um, even though it works great for you know taking pictures or whatever, um, and it seems to work okay on my cell phone, if you're doing something with a lot of input and output, you're highly likely to burn that SD card. Now, um, I want to say there is a type of SD card that does it better, but I, the name evades me. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and open up this box, see what we got. Because I have not opened it, and I really want to open it. So, uh, let me make some space here, and we'll aim this down now. Mmm, coffee. Okay, so, uh, let us break this seal. I should keep it boxed up and sell it in a few years. <laughs> anyway, uh... If anyone is curious, you can get them, apparently. Of course, when I looked at it on Newegg, it says not available. I'm not really sure who else sells this right now. I don't have, you can just search it on NVIDIA, I'm not an affiliate or anything like that. They don't pay me to say this. I think you can actually, I don't know if you can buy it on NVIDIA's website or not. But anyway, to the chip. Uh, so here's the board. I don't know how well you guys can see it. Um, it's basically taking up this entire box. And too bad we can't really see the chip. You can look up pictures of it online to get pictures of the chip, but over the chip is a, uh, a fan to cool it. And so <laughs> that makes a lot of sense because I bet this chip gets pretty warmish, uh, especially if you're using all uh, 192 cores. Now, the next thing, let's see what else we got in here. So here's the chip. Now, we have a what looks to be recycled materials. Uh, introduction basically to the board no problem no problem it's like power possibly this is a serious power my goodness yeah this is your power <laughs> uh, no more mini USB apparently I want to say you could power this by mini USB. I swear I read that, but we'll look at it in a minute. And then we got what looks to be our USB used with something. It looks like a controller. I don't really know for sure. It's a mini USB. Well, yeah, it's a mini USB plug. It looks like you're supposed to use it with a controller, but I don't really, I can't tell very much. This is a Lego piece. <laughs> it looks to be a Lego piece. And then uh, the plug for our power. And that would be everything. So literally the only instructions that come with this are here. Now I have kind of read up online. There is a ton of information on NVIDIA's website about the Tegra K1. Setting it up, they have a bunch of software there for you. Um, so easy enough. Close all of this. We don't want that. And so I'm not really sure if this is probably has no use. It's probably just a... Uh, a gift to people or something. I have no idea. It honestly looks like Lego. Did someone correct me? Is this buttons maybe? No. I'm very curious. It looks like a little Lego piece. Uh, anyway, enough of that. Um, then we have this USB cord. That I'm not really sure what its purpose is. It's very specific in what it's supposed to be used with. 
it looks like a controller to me, but uh, it's a USB to mini USB, so whatever you wanted to use that for, I'm pretty sure. And that right there. And here we have our massive uh, power supply box here. That's huge. It's bigger than like my laptops. Okay, anyway, so there's that. And finally, the, uh, the entire dev kit itself. Now, let's see. Yeah, for here, um, before you start playing with this, you would want to make sure you ground yourself, you know, touch something metal. I'm not sure if this is plastic or metal, but you'd want to touch something metal, metal make sure you don't have a charge because you could uh, ruin the entire kit. But anyway. Um, I have static down here in Texas. Now. <clears throat> Slowly, careful, easy. And here we have our Tegra K1 dev kit. So here we got uh, some power, some IO, VGA, um, audio, Ethernet, USB. I'm pretty sure that blue stands for 3.0. Um, DC power looks like right here. Interesting, interesting. HDMI, Zeta. Honestly, not even sure what JAE. Not really sure what this plug is here. Somebody let me know. I'll have to look at a picture and figure out what that is. Anyway, so yeah, cool. So this is all of our stuff here. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of things to play with for sure. Definitely going to be a lot of fun. So anyway, uh, that is your Tegger K1 dev kit. Quite the size. At first I thought it was two ra about the size of two Raspberry Pis, but this is really the size of probably one, two, three Raspberry Pis, if we were being honest. So quite a bit larger, and I'm curious how well it will fit on my quadcopter. It actually looks like it should fit, but let me... I don't knock over my coffee. So yeah, it'll fit. Um, not really sure how well you guys can see that, but uh, it'll fit just barely. It's like the perfect size. Uh, just trying my best not to bang something. Anyway, you'll have to take my word for it. It fit. So that's cool. The other thing I was going to do if that didn't fit was just stack Raspberry Pis on there. Because one Raspberry Pi just won't cut it. But if we... Uh, did some uh, just networking between the pies they could all work together so um, that was the backup but this will fit it's a good thing I was starting to worry if I needed it I didn't realize that quad was gonna be that big I don't read specifications usually so <laughs> I was more interested in the price of that quad um, than anything else and uh, so anyway we're lucky I didn't, I didn't get any smaller quad I would have had to buy another one so anyways um, so that's it with the Tagger K1 I'm going to play with it a little bit. I have never played with it, so I can't really do too much else with it until I uh, set this up. There's a whole bunch of, like I said, documents online about what you you need to do to get this thing running. They have a you know a Linux that you can install here. Um, I'm very curious to put a game on it and see how well it plays. I'll plug it into one of these monitors. Um, probably show you guys how that, how that works. Anyway, I wouldn't mind testing that stuff. Uh, but then after that, my biggest interest is in the input-output. And um, and then CUDA, right? So <laughs> the idea of, of CUDA is really nice because the board comes from NVIDIA. So this means we can do use all of the v development up to this point and all of the um, you know support for CUDA programming up to this point because this is a CUDA-enabled GPU. Um, so that's very exciting. So even if you didn't have a Tegra K1, you could probably follow along with some of the videos just based on programming with a CUDA enabled GPU. That said, I do actually have two CUDA enabled GPUs in my main computer as well, so I could have done those anyway, but um, it'll be fun to play with this little board. So that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. One last look at the Tegra K1 dev kit. I'm having such a hard time. There we go. Um, so that's it. Excited to play with the board. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. 
questions or comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.